Today's episode is going to be addressing a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about affirmative action. Now, this affirmative action is rather controversial for some people. It's especially prevalent in the discussion of college admissions with favoring of specific groups due to a discrimination against them that occurred previously. Um, but today's episode, we're not going to be focusing on American affirmative action, but we're going to be taking a look at affirmative action in Brazil, which is one of the most racially diverse countries in Latin America. And I found it really interesting, the approach they take to affirmative action. And I think it's something definitely worth discussing. ¿Qué onda? Soy Sebastián y este podcast es Otomi. For all of my non-Spanish native speakers, this is Sebastián and I'm a high school student in the Bay Area. I've got the facts and the opinions. Join me as we discuss topics of society, culture, identity, education, and life. I read an article on foreignpolicy.com, I believe, where it discusses the affirmative action in Brazil. And this was something really interesting to me. The article is called Brazil's New Problem with Blackness. And it's something that, to me, really stuck out because I've we, we often in the United States have a specific way of going about affirmative action with the self-reporting of race, and oftentimes there's race fraud with people lying about it. Um, but in Brazil, which is a country that's very racially diverse with uh, individuals who are mixed uh, with different percentages of African, indigenous, European descent, Asian descent, and the, they, they've taken a different approach to addressing this and addressing the issue of fraud. So in Brazil, the majority of the population is mixed race, similar to Mexico. However, in, Mexi in, in Mexico, the majority of individuals are mestizo, where they're mixed with indigenous and European or Spanish blood. But in, in, in Brazil, it's primarily uh, African descent in Portuguese or, Bra or European descent. And... Many of these individuals identify as pardo or pardo, um, which I believe is is an alternative for mulato, which of course I I don't use due to its derogatory nature, um, which I explained in one of the previous episodes. So this article kind of takes the perspective of the student, just just for part of the article, not the entire thing. But the student's name is Fernando, and he is a student at a very prestigious university in Brazil, or at least he used to be. Fernando took advantage of the uh, affirmative action system favoring uh, setting aside places for people of black, brown, and indigenous descent. Uh, and this is in the public institutions. Now, Fernando applied to the Federal University of Pelotas, which is in um, in the south of Brazil. And this is a prestigious school. As in, in Brazil, the public schools have more prestige. The public universities have more prestige than the, the private ones. And affirmative actions in Brazil is relatively... Uh, affirmative action is relatively new in Brazil. In the U.S., it was first introduced around the 1970s, while in, in Brazil it was introduced in 2001. And it, it was part of this idea in Brazil of a racial democracy. Uh, the, the Brazil held itself at a higher standard, or at least perceived itself to be morally superior to the United States. But the United States, which had that Jim Crow era of racism and segregation, as well as South Africa with its apartheid. Brazil perceived itself, its country to be a, 
haven for individuals of black and white um, descent and a somewhat of a place where they the both worlds collided as seen through the the racial diversity after all brazil has a very long history of slavery remember around five million slaves were brought to brazil from africa while in the u.s 500,000. so clearly large large number of slaves were brought to brazil this idea of a racial paradise was many many black activists called it to be somewhat of a, a fallacy because in reality there's a lot of race-based discrimination and prejudice in brazil just as much as there is here and there is, there are shootings of individuals that are clearly uh, tar race targeted and it's an issue that has been in the mouths of many many activists who have been calling for uh, greater legislation by the government and one of those moves was for this affirmative action which around 20 years ago they started there is now controversy and conflict with this affirmative action where the brazil basically decided to do what we do here in the u.s which is self-reporting where you self-report what your racial identity is now the thing is that in brazil a large percentage of the population identifies as mixed race and the, many of the white people, 30% of those who consider themselves to be white, have some African ancestry and some black ancestors. And for that reason, it's been really difficult with the, um, with the whole entire affirmative action issue because many of the people benefiting from the affirmative action don't look black. They don't have any phenotypic features. They are phenotypically white. And this was something that many of the black students were concerned about because they would be in class and they'd look around and they'd say, all of these people here, none of them look like me. They all look white. Yet they came into this school under the criteria of an affirmative action system. So that's a conflict. And as some people, as in the article they mention, the affirmative, the affirmative action, the spots of affirmative action are for people who are phenotypically black. It's not for people who have a distant relative who is, who happens to be black or Afro-descendant. Now, due to this controversy, uh, there have been lawsuits. One of them was uh, by a activist group, the Setorial Negro, which uh, basically sued the students, 27 students, uh, at the Pelotas University. And this was to sue these uh, phenotypically white students who came in under the guise of being, uh, in the guise of being students of um, African descent benefiting from affirmative action. So through this investigation, 24 of the students were kicked off. Now, uh, off the campus. One of these students was Fernando, who I mentioned earlier. He was a pardo, or he identifies as being mixed race, part black, part white. But because he was phenotypically more white than black, even though he doesn't necessarily consider himself to be that way, that's how others looked at him. He was sued for that, and he was one of the students that was kicked off of the campus. And that is the issue now for a lot of people and a big concern that it's appearing to be somewhat of a, a witch hunt where people are saying, okay, you, you do not deserve to benefit from this affirmative action system, which is set in place for specific people of African descent. Um, and we need to take a historic look at why there is so much racial mixing in Brazil. Remember, Brazil had that large number of slaves who were imported. When we look at the United States and we look at Brazil, there are just vast 
historical differences that really explain why the the population is very different. I'd say that the history of Brazil is much more similar to that of Mexico and the miscegenation and racial mixing between the indigenous and the Spanish than any sort of interracial relations that occurred here in the United States. The reason for this is really the Jim Crow era of laws in the United States, as well as just the founding of the nation. When the United States was founded, it was founded by many religious individuals who were who came in families. That was it. Many of the first arrivals to, to the U, now United States, the British colonies, were in families. On the other hand, to the Spanish colonies and the Portuguese colonies, the majority of them were men. Now, these men ended up unfortunately, raping a lot of African slaves and indigenous slaves and indigenous servants. This is what really first contributed to that racial uh, diversity that we have in those countries. That in the United States, they set strict boundaries against the the mixing between Afro-descendants and indigenous people um, from the white population. Now, another reason for this is Latin America received many more slaves than the United States. Brazil specifically received the most slaves. And the manner in which, uh, and of course, the, the white people then were scared. They were like, oh, goodness, look at the number of, of um, African slaves we've imported. Now we're outnumbered. Recall that Brazil continued to have slaves until 1888. 1888 was when slavery was abolished. Think about that. So much later than the United States. That, that's really the thing, because after that, even in prior to abolition in 1872, white people made up 30% of the population. So the rest of that was black and indigenous, primarily black and white people started a movement after the abolition of slavery in 1888 um, with this illusion of, oh, we're all getting along. Oh, we're, this is our haven of racial diversity. With that illusion, they promoted and had propaganda, basically, to whiten the country. Brazil was a country of primarily black people, and now the goal of the government and the ruling elites was to make it white. So what did they do? They denied rights, property to the descendants of slaves. They stopped immigration from countries in Africa. They sponsored and funded immigration from immigrants from, Brazil, from Europe, like Italy and Germany. This was an attempt to eliminate a group that was not there by choice. The descendants of African slaves and the African slaves who were still alive at the time of this uh, abolishment of slavery, they were not there voluntarily. And now that the white people didn't see any use for them, their goal was to eliminate them, to erase them and to make the country's gene pool wider. That was the goal. And now what we see today is a wide spectrum of skin colors ranging from every skin tone, just like much of the rest of Latin America. In Brazil, due to the fact that there's such a wide spectrum of race, in that a lot of it comes from just African descent and European descent, quite simple, right? Well, not exactly, because the degree to which an individual possesses a certain percentage of African descent and European descent varies vastly with each individual. And for that, pers- that, for that reason, um, it's not very binary. The way we see race here in the United States tends to be quite binary. We see it as black and white. In countries like Brazil, that's not feasible. The sadness kind of in Brazil is that there is a contradiction, a clear contradiction, in that there, there is a widespread, supposed widespread acceptance of mixed race people, but there's still significant racial 
inequality. And that does appear to be a clear contradiction, right? And interracial romance in Brazil is still primarily occurs in the lower classes. I want to take a look at this quote by a Brazilian anthropologist who in 1912 said that the mixed race Brazil of today looks to whiteness as its subjective, its way out and its solution. This anthropologist of Brazil actually predicted that black Brazilians would be extinct by 2012. Now to the affirmative action. In 2012, the law of social quotas keeps around half of admission spots in federally funded universities for public high school graduates. Uh, in Brazil, as I said before, the public high schools are more prestigious than the private ones. Uh, and there must be specific places for black and indigenous people in proportion to the ratio of white to non-white residents in each state. Now they gave the government gave these the government gave the universities until 2016 for compliance to this law. Uh, and, and, and schools were permitted to have students self-report their racial identity. But this has just led to a problem. And that problem is that more people who look white are being accepted by claiming that they are black. So this brings the question, how can you react to this? How can you do this? And now is where you'll see that in Brazil, the issue of affirmative action is starting to take a different turn. Many leaders in Brazil are calling for greater oversight of this affirmative action in order to control the cases of fraud. Committees that address this uh, affirmative action have started to use personal interviews, in-person interviews, as a way to look at someone and see if they really are black or indigenous and not lying, which is very, very different from anything that we have here in the United States. I've, I haven't heard of anything like that here, where they, these interviews are now used uh, with, a, with a criterion um, of the phenotype of the interviewee. In which case, they, the interviewer is looking at their physical appearance, the width of their nose, the flatness of their nose, their type of hair, uh, their, their, even their, their skull shape, um, the color of their gums. These are things that people are writing down, writing it into notebooks and saying, okay, how much African, how, how much of your phenotype resembles that of the average black man, black woman? And of course, that's going to raise a lot of issues for many people because just, just because you're part black doesn't mean that you have to have stereotypical uh, black features. That's just not the case. People in Africa are diverse. North Africans are very different than, than sub-Saharan Africans. That's the truth. And someone from Ethiopia is going to look very different than someone from Senegal. That's just the truth. But this is, um, and many activists say that this is what, uh, that what the country has to resort to simply due to the fact that people are lying about their race. And individuals who shouldn't be benefiting from the system, individuals who are phenotypically white, are also the individuals who are now benefiting from it. And many students who are black who support this, this form of interview uh, say that their point is really that someone who is not phenotypically black, uh, th those aren't the ones who are being killed by the police every day. And for that reason, there's a clear difference in the way that individuals who are phenotypically black and Afro-descendant um, are treated than those who, are, who appear to be white. And of course, the, the, the system of affirmative action is supposed to remedy those issues and work towards a more equal society. Now you'll be shocked to hear that, I don't know how shocked you'll be, but now people are trying to find other ways to go about this. 
There are people who are shaving their heads, wearing beanies, getting tans, wearing dark makeup to appear as though they are black or at least have more African features. It's clearly a concern. And it shows just to the extent that people are willing to try to take advantage of a system in order to give themselves an advantage into being successful in their lives and getting into a good university. And I do think it's very unfortunate that people go out of their way instead of trying to better themselves or make themselves into better applicants. They try to take advantage of a system that is put in place. It's been put in place to improve the situation of individuals who are less privileged. The public system, the public school system in Brazil, I'm talking about high school, elementary school, it's it's not the best. The majority of individuals attending those schools are people of color. They're black children, indigenous children. The large portion of white students attend private schools. That's where you see that there is that social difference. The point of this affirmative action is to help the the state of many of these people who are Afro-descended, who are black, who are indigenous. That's the point. And when people take advantage of that, it's very sad. However, this article is from 2017. And as we know now, Bolsonaro, he's currently running the country and he's very conservative. He's running Brazil. He's the president. And... Policies are definitely, he's definitely against affirmative action. He has tried to pass legislation already. And if not him, his, his party of the social, the social liberal party. It's been active even in its first six months. It passed legislation to move away the affirmative action, to get rid of it or change the beneficiary group uh, and opposing proposing to abolish the racial quotas that there were before. Now, these bills are intended towards really curbing the the legislation, abolishing the legislation that we discussed earlier, correct? The one about giving a certain number of spots for black and indigenous students in universities. Bolsonaro and his party are against that. And they want to get rid of it. And it's the problem is his administration also really shows a lot of uh, animosity towards the this the, this system that's supposed to benefit the least privileged in society. He's very opposed to it. Now many of these new students are 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 activists against Bolsonaro's um, his whole movement and campaign against affirmative action as um, and, and also it's not just affirmative action but it's availability of higher education to individuals from all social strata his his administration has been outspoken about the access of higher education to all so there's still many activists who are fighting their fight and fighting for what is right at least on the upside, there there have there has been a significant increase in the number uh, in, in the amount of diversity in higher education in Brazil, and that's a very good sign. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was very interesting, something that somewhat shocked me uh, that they they considered the started considering the phenotype as a criterion for admission into a university Um, i highly doubt that something like that will happen here in the united states because i know that there would be very very strong opposition to it but i just think it's very interesting to look at it see you next episode